Sometimes content aware fill sucks. So we're gonna share some simple paint and roto techniques that will get you some great results. Chapter links in the description below. That's how you did it. Yeah. I am speechless at that. <laughs> how simple it is. I'm here with Evan, he's a filmmaker. Evan, introduce yourself. Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Evan. I live out in Los Angeles with Sean and I and the co-founder of Wild Oz Film. I'm not actually the founder. I don't know why it's a co-founder. We do micro shorts. We also do your average short films. We don't really fall into a specific genre. We kind of just come up with ideas on the fly and figure out if we can make them happen or not. Evan asked me to do some VFX touch-ups on his short film. So I'm gonna show him how I did that. And then you can learn a little bit too. It'll be a lot of fun. It's like a collab. One thing that's important when you're working with a client is to make them feel comfortable. So as you see Evan here right now, he's beside me and I'm using a posture that's you know confident because I don't want him to just ram me over with his thoughts and ideas. Ultimately, I still need to have some kind of control to make him feel like he has a little bit of control too. And I am pretty refreshed over here too. I provide him with refreshments. Initially, uh, when I was given this project from Evan, you gave me your reference, which from what I can gather, you use content aware fill, which I can tell because this looks awful and <laughs> it's kind of an insult, first of all, that you would even use content aware fill. Why not just reach out to me? So, you know, when a client is like, hey, can you do this? I basically already did it because it's pretty easy. But here you go, you know, maybe you can do a bit better than me, but your job's, you know, pretty basic. Trying to, trying to make the job easier for you. I'm cleaning up the plate that you have to clean up. If you can just do it yourself, you send it to me using content aware fill, then why why use me anyways? It's because I have a thousand subs on YouTube. That doesn't make me a king. I'm just a normal guy. For having a thousand? It's hard. YouTube's hard. <laughs> next time, <laughs> just give me the plate blank. So next time I'll just shoot a white wall and I'll say, hey, can you add in a hot air balloon? Can you add in a landscape? Can you add in a van behind the basket that then we have to remove out? So here, if a client doesn't want to really tick you off, this is a good way to circle it. But then to also throw in, this is my work because I basically got 90% of the way there. So what he did with Content Aware Fill, you can see it's, um, we're just, we're going to try to avoid using it ourselves. But what, what he wasn't able to do was get these ropes lined up very well. And then the truck is obviously still there. Yeah, I was actually thinking if, for the balloon, if instead of it, being warm going to cool, if we could maybe swap the two of them and have it go from cool to warm. I, I, that was not at all on your little scribbled notepad Photoshop thing to change the color. And I did not slot enough time for that. Maybe you could use content aware fill to change the color. The thing with your client is that even if they have no idea what they want, you just have to hold that smile. A client contract relationship is very important. Most of the time you're gonna be thinking that they're a complete moron, but you you bite your tongue. You never you never insult the client, no matter how stupid they are. <laughs> Sorry, sounds like me. Is that right? <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Do you think we can turn this tree blue? It's on a tripod, so there's no movement. I got my balloon. I'm just gonna double the layer. I'm gonna get my mask out. And I'm gonna hit Y, which gives me this pan behind tool. And then I'm just gonna slide that sucker and it's done. But as you can see the colors, if I hit Command Shift H, or you can click down here and you can turn your mask on and off, you can see the solid line there. So this is the best way. Once you remove your mask or make it invisible, you can get a better idea of how good your patch is. And then you wanna hit F, bring down your feather and muck it around like that. And if you can't quite get it, we can add a curves and bring it up or down. So when Evan originally sent me these shots, they had noise added to them by the colorist. So I think the best process to do VFX shots, if you can get it colored first, that's why I always tell a client, and then I do the VFX, which is not usually a lot of time for that. Mm. In this case, since we had time, colored first, but then I got it back with a grain added. And while I could technically still do the VFX shot, when you have added grain to a shot, it should be added after you do the VFX. You see how they go soft and then clear. So if you have them like on the half pixel, it's just not gonna like look right. It just adds more room for error, so. And you can't content aware of that. Oh, we should try that. That is terrible. Yeah. It's like a still image of grain and it's just trying to make it work. Ooh. It looks like it's getting like really angry and it's gonna explode or something. <laughs> I want out of here. 
See, so yeah, same thing here with these mountains. I just double the layer. I'm just gonna rush this mask because I'm not gonna pay for it anyway. So why would I spend a lot of time on it? Hit Y. And you just have to find another part of the mountain to line it up. Like in this instance, it's pretty tricky. So I actually just made a circle around it. Yeah, and I just used content to wear fill. One thing that I did use it on for other shots, the lens was dirty. We were getting little smudges, little like gray black smudges. We were just up in the corners. I used content aware for that. And that worked like almost perfectly. So sometimes filmmakers, they think it's funny or they don't really care if they have something like a van in the shot because they can just fix it in post later. So I don't know why you would put something else that you don't want there in the middle of like the hero shot. Cause this whole fix it in post attitude is just, we can just fix it later. Cause my friend will do it for free. Why would you put that in the shot? We realized when we were originally shooting this that we could do everything practical, but one of the issues that we had is that I really enjoy working with Sean and I wanted him to be a part of this. So we decided that we were gonna add things into the elements that we're shooting so that he could go back in and remove it for us. So that you could be- So I could get a credit. The things we- You actually added these things in post. I thought it looked a little odd. <laughs> you went and added them from Google Images yeah. and then said, Sean, can you remove this? That's how I get work. It's my <laughs> friends who think about me. Otherwise there'd be no work because everyone just uses content to wear fill. So then to get this truck out, you can use the same method I just showed, but sometimes working with like a matte layer just feels like you have a bit more room to play with. So you create a mat for the area you don't want to see. This is a Luma mat. I'll use an alpha mat. What's the difference? Luma looks at everything that's white. Okay. It's going to use as a mat. With an alpha mat, it's just any any pixel. So I do that. I got my mat layer, which is white, but it can be any color, like a red, for example. And I'll dupe that. And I'll take my track mat or that. So this is now over top of the image. So this is what we actually have. And then this just allows me to have this independent of what I'm, so I'm gonna click it and just like shift drag. It just works easy for the shot because you have all this field. To That's use. how you did it? Yeah. And then hit feather. I am speechless at that. <laughs> how simple it is. Ooh. That's amazing. Yeah, real simple. Yeah, I'm gonna use this feather tool so that I can keep it more solid. The, I didn't know you could choose to individually feather. Yeah. From certain distances. Yeah, it's been out for a couple years. That way this is more feathered and just blends it nicer. Oh. Oh yeah. The one thing that I was having an issue with because I did try content aware on this as a test uh -huh. was it kept reading the basket. So the basket was continuing, and like for some reason I was having an issue with the car tires. So it was just turning that blob into baskets and tires on my end. Total headache, mm -hmm. total headache. Yeah, cause it's basically like an AI tool. So it's just trying to make its best guess of what it's gonna replace it with. This one, cause you have these cables in the way, same deal. There's a lot of gradient. We shot that around 8.30 a.m. and we were waiting for most of the other balloons to actually take off. That's why there's so many in the background. And what part of town was it? This scene was shot down in Temecula with magical adventure balloons. The reason why the van is there too is if they move the van, the van's actually the thing weighing down the balloon at this point. Oh, so you couldn't fill it up like that if the van wasn't there. So when the van drove off, it pretty much just went. Mm -hmm. We got the color pretty much matched. And then to get these cables, I literally just made a stroke <laughs> and made sure that my fill is turned off. That's great. And then shift command H. Yeah, make sure the thickness is, is good. And then we get a blur, Gaussian lens, whatever your preference, and match it and then bring down the opacity and then actually use this layer as a track mat that just make sure it's back on. So now it's using the masks that I put on here to actually blend it in with the real rope since I've already done the work. Yeah, there you go. Get the other ones as well. Might as well use the same layer since it's already blurred and matted and matched. And there you go. That's how you move that balloony. 
Yeah, this one had these cars. I kind of use your content to wear fill as a challenge. If you know what to look for, it looks kind of smudgy. Of course, your eyes, it could, you could pass with it. No one would have noticed because it doesn't, everyone's looking here at the action. Either way, I wanted to try to do a better job using all the techniques I kind of showed. I just took different areas of this image and I pre-composed all these pieces that are just from different parts. So I just kind of squished some of the scale. But yeah, I recreated that. So I added that patch and then I added this grass. I think I just re-put what was already there and kind of scaled it up to blend this fence of that bush. I just added another piece of fence. So in a way, having your content aware fill gave me a challenge to do something better because I don't want to give you something that was not as good. So use AI to put a fire under your butt to do better. If AI can do it real good, you can do it better because you're a human freaking being. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself, even when the director doesn't. That are you, are you saying that I didn't believe in you? Here's a dangling stick in front of you, VFX guy. Ooh, I mark my big deal film. Shots. You'll get a credit. Where am I in in the list of credits? Like beginning, middle. I didn't send you the full thing, did I? No, you haven't shown me the credits list yet. You're supposed to send it to me. You might be three quarters of the way down. So the end, essentially. There's the pre-production team, the production team. They were all in. I don't think that's how it's supposed to go, but okay. Didn't ask me to make the credits. Just asked me to do VFX stuff. No one notices VFX stuff. No one goes, hey, I saw your work. How you erased that van? No. The van, they don't even see it, so they have no idea. You, they're like, what did you do? And you tell them, I erased the balloons in the van. They go, oh, <laughs> I didn't see those. No kidding. Maybe we can content aware your name out of the credits. You just put black box. You don't need to use content aware fill for everything. Just delete the text. <laughs> <laughs> You don't need a black box. That's doing more work. Whatever, man. <laughs> you just, just track it. <laughs> and the same software you just created it in. We met... Was it 2018? We can't we talk about like most of the things that we worked on because we're heavily NDA'd. I never know Can we say is. we worked at where we worked? It doesn't really matter. So, yeah, so we met working at a company uh, doing post-production in 2018. And 2018. So it's 2023 when we're making this. We yeah, five years, five years, half a decade. And then we've worked on projects since. You came to my house and we did the fate and we did the other <laughs> client thing. The other thing we can't rest. Yeah. That's the problem about talking about what you worked on yeah. together. You're not really supposed to say. When we were both working at that one place we can't talk about, the first place, the first place for everyone, back in 2018. And I think we worked there together on and off. We were both freelancing there for maybe two years. I would work on personal projects for myself. Sean was working on personal projects with himself. We realized that we both were into what each other were doing. And then we just started, after we stopped working there together, we still kept in touch and start, continued working and like keeping that friendship and that collaboration going. Which I think is awesome. We both live in LA. Like what? How long did it take you to get here? Yeah, 10, 15 minutes. Which is fortunate because sometimes you know, you'll be friends with people and they'll live in... We live 20 minutes away and you'll never see them. But 15 minutes, I can drive 15 minutes. A lot easier than 20 minutes. Now I have friends who live up now like in the valley. I went up Friday and it took us an hour and a half to get there. Yeah. LA is a big sprawling place. So tell me about your short film. What's How can people see it? We're going to submit it to a couple of film festivals. And then after that, I'll be releasing it on our YouTube channel. I'll be releasing it possibly on Instagram as well. How long? But you're going to put in festivals first? Yeah. That means you can't really put, so it's going to be a while to us on YouTube. They can follow you on Instagram and find out what festivals it's going to be playing at. And then you can see it at those festivals. Yeah, you guys can either check out the our main website, wildhousefilm.com, or you can, uh, I'm sure we'll put a link in the bio for the YouTube page, but the newest project that we're working on is an original comedy. You haven't seen something like this in a minute. It has slapstick in it. We're trying to bring back a lot of physical comedy with this one. The meat and potatoes, the whole part of it is main character had passed away and his two stoner roommates and his ex-girlfriend decide that they want to honor his final wishes by stealing his body and giving him what he wants. So they're going on one final adventure with him. Cut to AI generation of Evan eating meat and potatoes. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Sean. This is Evan, Wild Oz Film. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys you next video. It. Yeah. Sorry, I talked over you. We can do it again. No, it's fine. I'm used to being mowed over by directors. It's yeah, I mean, that's... 
I'm just a VFX guy. Yeah. 